Welcome back to our screencasts on algorithms. We're working our way now through a series of screencasts on graphs and today we're going to look at minimum spanning trees, the first in a series of classic algorithms on graphs. And while we're doing this I am uh, using some pictures of Hawaii that I thought I would illustrate my screencast with. Uh, in the graph section we're working our way up through the northwestern Hawaiian Islands which has been designated the Papa Hanao Mokuakea National Monument. And here we are approaching Laysan Island, which certainly has a minimum of trees. Those, that little patch on the left is all there is, and then there's a camp on the right. And we're going to land here on the island. And when we landed, I had to change into island clothes because you can't bring any seeds to contaminate the uh, vegetation there and then we strolled off down the beach to do some science I'll tell you about later. A spanning tree, which we'll usually represent with the letter T for a connected graph G, is a tree that includes all the vertices of G. So it spans the graph. It reaches all the vertices, but it's a tree. Now we've already encountered two kinds of spanning trees in the introduction to graphs in the previous screencast and um, my web notes. Uh, those were generated by breadth-first search and depth-first search. So, for example, in uh, breadth-first search, we started at a node and we visited all the neighbors, and then we visited all their neighbors, and so on, in such a manner that we constructed a tree. These edges I've just drawn in constitute a tree. You can see that um, they reach all the vertices, it's a spanning tree, um, and there's no cycles. So it's connected, and there's no cycles, therefore it's a tree, and it spans the graph. So that's a spanning tree with a particular kind of property. It helps us find shortest paths in terms of number of edges from a start vertex. We also saw depth-first trees. These again were trees. But here we started with a vertex, and instead of going to all the neighbors, after we went to each neighbor, we went to its neighbors until we couldn't go any, any further but we keep going deep. That's why it's called depth first. And so we could explore a fairly long chain of the graph before we come back and see if there's any other neighbors um, previously to explore. So these, this depth first tree we saw tells us something about the graph, told us about connectivity and we could do topological sorts with it. Uh, so they gave us uh, important properties of the graph. But today we're going to look at a different kind of spanning tree than these two spanning trees that are going to be called minimum spanning trees. Uh, to motivate this, let's consider that in many application areas, we want to minimize the cost of reaching a set of objects or locations. Uh, so, for example, an electrical circuit. Um, you have all these components on a circuit, and you want to distribute power to all of them with the minimum cost of wiring. Um, you can also think of it in terms of like transportation networks. Uh, there's many applications. So to model these applications, we need to have not just vertices representing objects and edges representing connections between them, but we also need to have costs associated with those edges. So we're going to need what we're going to call weighted graphs. So a weighted graph is just a normal graph, you know, G equals VE, uh, but we're going to associate it with it um, well, one way to think of it is every edge has associated with it a weight, W, between the two vertices. And um, that weight is a real number. So we can say W is a function that maps the edges. Um, you could also write uh, V cross V instead of V. Maps that to the real numbers. So you give each edge a weight. So given these definitions, the minimum spanning tree problem is to find a tree, T, which is a subset of the edges, um, such that these things are true. First of all, T connects all the vertices. And the minimum part, the sum of the weights, we'll say the weight of T is equal to sum, sum across all edges in E, their weight. We want to minimize that. So that's the basic problem. Uh, some things to note here, of course, for this to be possible, uh, for, G, for T to connect all vertices of G, G has to be a connected graph. 
We can, however, generalize this to finding a sequence of spanning trees uh, T1, Tc, where C is the number of connected components of the graph. And uh, one of the algorithms we look at will do this naturally, the other one won't. And the subgraph of G that connects its vertices at minimal cost will always be a tree. You might want to think about why. Of course, if there's a cycle, then you haven't reached the minimal cost. And if it's got too few edges to be a tree, it's not connected. So that's why. So this is called the minimum spanning tree problem. And here we have an example of a minimum spanning tree. So the shaded edges represent the T in this overall graph. And uh, the claim here is that this connects, this tree connects all the vertices, which it does. And the claim is also that it is at minimum cost. So you can imagine, uh, well, can I replace any edges and make it cheaper? No. Now you could replace this edge here with this one here and the cost wouldn't change because they're both cost three. So that uh, brings up the point that minim minimum spanning trees are not unique. Now after a brief interlude, we will look at a generic algorithm for finding minimum spanning trees. So I mentioned that I was on a scientific expedition as part of an education outreach team. Uh, here we are going to retrieve a surface temperature recorder that's called affectionately the pipe bombs of science. These are pipes with temperature recorders that record the water temperature every 30 seconds for up to two years. And they try to retrieve them every year. The second year is for safety. And so we had to go find these with GPS and uh, cut it out of the reef and install a new one. All the while being harassed by the uh, fellow whose territory we were in. Sometimes these guys would get pretty bold and you'd have to punch them to get them to leave you alone. This is a blue trevally, by the way. We're going to start with a generic algorithm for solving the minimum spanning tree problem. And then in the next screencast, we'll show two versions of this algorithm, Kruskal's and Prim's algorithm. Uh, this generic algorithm, the idea is that we start with a, a set, initially an empty set of edges, A. And then we're going to loop. We're going to uh, select edges in this loop and add edges that are safe for A. We'll talk about that in a minute. So A becomes A union that edge until A forms a spanning tree and then we return it. So clearly this will return a spanning tree and the question is how do we know it's a minimum spanning tree? Uh, and that's going to be in the concept of safe. So it operates on this basic loop invariant that A is always a subset of some minimum spanning tree for G. Remember there's multiple minimal spanning trees. We don't want to have to worry about which one it is a subset of or which one we'll end up with in the end. But this is always true at the beginning because the empty set is a subset of a minimum spanning tree and the loop maintains it because we only add safe edges and again we'll explain that in a minute but the definition of safe is that if A is a subset of some minimum spanning tree so is A union the edge which is essentially restating loop invariant. So a safe edge, it will be something that will maintain the loop invariant. And then termination, we stop when A is a spanning tree, that if you only add edges that make sure that A stays a subset of some minimum spanning tree, and you stop when it is a spanning tree, it has to be a subset of itself. It can't be a subset of a bigger tree because then that bigger tree wouldn't be minimum. It wouldn't even be a tree. So let's look at what it means to be a safe edge. Here's the safe edge theorem, but let's just start with an intuitive gloss on it. Basically the idea of the safe edge theorem is if you have two sets of vertices that are not yet connected to each other, ignore the edges between them right now, and you, of course, to form a spanning tree you need to find a connection between them in order to, the tree has to be a connected graph. And so you've got a bunch of edges here to choose between. So the safe edge theorem says if the edges you've got so far are of lowest cost and you choose another edge of lowest cost, like say this one here that crosses between those two sets, then that's safe. The uh, larger set of edges formed by taking your previous set and adding this one will also be safe. So it simply says if you add the lowest cost edge to connect two collections of previously unconnected vertices then that will also be a subset of a minimum spanning tree. 
Now let's look at the theorem itself. Uh, first we need some definitions. So a cut is a partition of the vertices V into S and V minus S. An edge UV crosses the cut if one end is in one of the partitions, the other end is in the other partition. A cut respects a set of edges such as A if no edge in A crosses the cut. So that captures the idea that the cut has partitioned the vertices into two set of vertices that have not yet been connected. And now we're looking for a crossing edge that will connect them. And of course we want a light edge which has to do with the minimum spanning tree idea. The light edge will be the edge crossing the cut that has the minimum weight over all the edges crossing the cut. And there can be more than one, like in this proof we're going to look at x and y and u and uh, v being light edges. So now let's briefly prove the safe edge theorem. Um, it says if you have a graph and you have a, a set of edges, it's a subset of, of some edges, of the edges of G, and it's a subset of some MST for G, and we've got a partition, a cut, that respects A, so that means there's two sets of vertices, no edges cross between them yet, and we found a, a light edge that does cross between them, so we want to add it. And so this is the, the crux of the greedy algorithm thing. We want to show that a greedy algorithm that finds a light edge, this is making the greedy choice, picking the light edge, making the greedy choice. We want to show that that's safe. So the proof. Let's let T be an MST that contains A. So we know there must be a, a MST, must exist for the graph. It's a connected graph. And um, A is, by hypothesis, a subset of some MST, and we're just worried about whether adding that, that edge will make that still be true. Uh, so now we've got two cases to consider here. The first case is where this edge, U, V, is in T. Then we're done. Because by adding that edge, of course, A is still a subset of some MST. So we're worried about here case two, where this is not true. So we're going to show that we can construct a tree T prime, an MST for G that contains A with the edge added. And that's where we go to our picture here. So we've got it. We, we know there exists a T in MST, and um, it contains A. But we want to show that by adding, when we add this edge here, that A will still be a, a subset of some MST, not necessarily this one. So here's the MST uh, that we have here indicated by the shaded edges. So it's, since it's a tree, it must have a unique path between the two vertices we're concerned with here. You know, here's the edge we wanted to add between U and V. But we're dealing with a case now where U and V is not in T. Since U and V must be connected to each other, some other edge, let's say between X and Y, must cross this cut here. And so then we just do a simple cut and paste argument. Um, the cut respects um, A, so this edge is not already in A. Uh, so to form T prime, we're just going to uh, remove this edge, take it out, and uh, that breaks T into two components because you know it's a tree. When you remove an edge, then the graph becomes disconnected. And then, of course, we're going to add this one, UV, which will reconnect them. And so that's our T prime. T prime is T minus XY union UV. So this is a spanning tree because we have now reconnected the components that weren't connected before. Um, it's got to be a minimal spanning tree because this is a light edge. UV is a light edge. So XY could not have a lower cost than UV. They have to be the same. So we still have to show that UV is safe for A. Now, since by hypothesis, um, A was a subset of, of T, and XY was not an A, because if it was, we'd, this cut would not have respected A. You know, it would have crossed A. Then that must mean that A is a subset of T prime, uh, because um, if A is a subset of T, and T prime, we've just taken out XY, which is not an A. That doesn't affect the, their subset relation. And so adding this other edge, it still must be a subset of T prime because UV is now part of T prime. That's how we constructed it. Uh, so it is safe. So that concludes the proof. If you want to um, see it in more formal detail, see the notes or the textbook, 
a few further observations. Uh, we can look at this. There's actually a corollary to this uh, theorem where we think in terms of uh, components, uh, connected components of the graph. So if you have uh, two components, uh, C1 and C2, and then you find a light edge connecting C1 and C2, uh, instead of having sets of vertic vertices, these two things, these two uh, uh, shapes here could represent these two components, then the, the light edge would be safe for connecting those components. And that's going to be the basis for Kruskal's algorithm, which works in terms of components. Well, Prim's works in terms of um, edges. So if you think of how we, st when we start, we have uh, each vertex is a single component. And then any safe edge merges two of these components into one, starting with isolated vertices. And each of those components constructed that way is a tree. And the loop is obviously going to iterate exactly v minus 1 times before we are down to one component, because any tree has exactly v minus 1 edges. Uh, so that's the complexity of the loop, how many times it operates. We, of course, have to see the complexity of what it takes to find an edge in these greedy algorithms that we're going to look at next. Well, a quick stop at the camp, the Fish and Wildlife Service camp on Le Sand Island. And uh, walking back along the beach, we see our mothership, the Hialakai, out there. And now we're going to head into the interior of the island in the next segment on minimum spanning trees.